Hi guys and welcome to this video where I show you how to install the Sharpshooters Extreme Graphics ENB, the original version. Now if you don't know what that mod is, I just released a video showing it and you can check that out by clicking the link on the screen now or below this video. One of the major reasons people are a little reluctant to try ENB mods is the installation process. It is a little different. It's not actually that difficult and it has more in common with mods like SKSE. So if you've installed SKSE, honestly, this is not really that different. It's, it, is, it is not going to be a huge problem for you. But I do, I do understand people look at it, you can't install it with the Nexus Mod Manager and you know that little edge of nerves set in. You don't want to ruin your game. Don't worry, it's very easy to install and more importantly, it's very easy to uninstall and you should not have any problems with it. So let's get started. The first thing I'm actually going to do is scroll down the main page to the installation guide for the classic version, not for version three, the classic version. This is the original sharpshooters. And step two, says that you're going to need to download a file from another link. So I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to go to that in a second tab in my browser. Don't worry if your browser doesn't support that. I'm using Google Chrome right now. All you do is select this, copy, start a new tab for your browser however you do that and just paste it in, press enter and you'll get the same effect. My apologies if you all knew that, I just wanted to be absolutely sure. So, I've now got the two pages I need. I'm gonna to go to the file section of the Sharpshooters Extreme Graphic ENB and I'm going to download manually. And we are installing the original version and do not download with manager. You've got to download this manually. And then I'm going to go to the ENB page I just opened and click on this icon here and download that file. Now this is version 1.02 of the ENB series mod and I think that's fairly old, but that's the one used for the Sharpshooters Extreme Classic version. Once the two files have downloaded, I, I place them on my desktop. I think it's a little easier to work that way. I'm going to extract both archives. Now I'm gonna use WinRAR, the program WinRAR, and I'm going to right click and extract to, and I'm gonna leave the name the same. This will create a folder with the same name as the file. And I'm gonna do the same there. If you're using 7-zip, it's pretty similar. If you don't have either of those programs installed, um, you're probably gonna need one, unless you have some other way of extracting archives. I will put links in the video below for WinRAR and 7-zip if you don't have them. I can then delete these. I now have the files I need extracted out here. The other things I'm going to need are Nexus Mod Manager. You don't strictly speaking need this to install the mod, but I do recommend doing it using the Nexus Mod Manager, at least some parts of it I will show you. And the other thing is you're gonna need the games folder, the Skyrim folder open, not the data folder. This is the folder where you find um, the skyrimlauncher.exe and the tesv.exe. Don't worry if you don't see the .exe. A lot of people have their operating setup so that what you will see is Skyrim Launcher without the .exe and TESV without the, ES, the .exe. Some systems hide those extensions. Don't worry about them. If you can see TESV with this icon next to it, that is the right folder. Now, the first thing you're going to need is from the ENB series folder, you're going to need the d3d9.dll. So select that, right click and copy. You can cut if you want because you're not going to need it after this. Go to the game folder, the Skyrim folder and right click and paste. So that is now in there. You no longer need this folder. You can delete it if you want. I'm going to keep it over there. The next thing you're going to need is in the original version 15105v1-0 <laughs> folder, great name. Um, you're going to need all of the files beginning with E. 
And that's the easiest way to, to think of it. This file here is just uh, some information, which I would recommend you do read. However, these are the files you need, the ones beginning with E. Copy these and put them in the same folder that you put the D3, D9, DLL. Now, the mod is actually installed mostly. Now, you can actually run the game and it will look great and you'll have most of the effects. But there are still some things to install to get the mod exactly the way the mod author intended. And most of those are in the data folder. Now, if you look at the other files, there is a folder called Added Performance and Less Neon Looking Grass at Night. Um, this is an optional file if you want as it says, less neon looking grass, and you want slightly improved performance. Um, I haven't tried this out myself, but if you're having performance issues, you can click in there, copy this, and paste it into the same folder, and it will ask to overwrite, and you want to click copy and replace, so it replaces it. I'm gonna cancel this because I don't want that, but that's if you want the performance version. The things I'm actually looking for are in the data folder. Now, to make this easy on myself, I'm actually going to copy the entire data folder onto my desktop, and I'm going to rename it to Sharp Shooters ENB Data. This is the data needed for Sharp Shooters ENB. Uh, there is also another file in the Greenwater Fix Dawn Guard. I will come back to that in a second. If I go into this folder I've just made, if I go into the Sharpshooters, um, oh, I renamed that incorrectly, ENB data, there is a textures folder and there are also some ESPs. Now, if you're using a very old version of realistic lighting, one that had a patcher, these files are for that. However, I'm not using it uh, with that mod, and it's a very old mod. I'm not even sure it's supported anymore. So I'm going to delete those. There is also the green water fix compatibility. Now, if you're having a problem with green water, you may need this. I don't, so I'm going to delete it. Um, the If I go back to the original version, there was this green water fix for Dawn Guard. I'm assuming it's the same thing. If you do need the green water fix, you probably should copy this one into this Sharpshooters ENB data. If you need the green water fix, just copy and paste into this data folder. I don't need this, so I'm deleting that as well. So all I've got left are the textures for effects and for the sky. This is for the sun glare. You, strictly speaking, don't need these. If you're using, for example, a water mod that has such a file, maybe you prefer that water mods, and maybe you're using a sun glare uh, mod and you prefer that. But these are the files that come with sharpshooters. These are the ones the mod author recommends. So that is the data. I now have the folder prepared. I right click and I'm going to add to sharpshooters ENB data dot ra. Very, very simple. And it will make a new archive. I can now move that out of the way just to focus on this. I now go to Nexus Mod Manager, go to the mod page, add mod from file. I select the Sharpshooters ENB data and add it as a mod. And the reason I'm doing it this way rather than just copying it is to make uninstallation easier. <laughs> makes it a little easier if I uninstall it, or if I don't like it, add another mod that changes the same files. So let's find it, Sharpshooters ENB, and activate. As you can see, this effect has already been added by Skydim HD 2K Textures, but I'm going to overwrite that. Same is true of the Skydim again. There you go. But I've now got the effects shipped with Sharpshooters ENB as well. And as I said, you may decide you don't want to use those and you want to use the ones from another mod. And that is it. It is now actually installed. The thing to do now is to go along to your, again, to your Skyrim game folder and run the Skyrim launcher. Even if you don't do this normally, run the Skyrim launcher now. 
because it will now say, oh, detecting video hardware. It's detected you've changed your hardware and sets, now it's set in mind for ultra high quality, which is what I want. You might want to change yours. Um, it's, it's something I really do highly recommend you do is open the launch. In fact, I believe some, it will actually force you to do so if you don't. However, don't try it, just open the launcher. Then you can exit and run the game with SKSE just as normal. And once you start your game, you will know if you've done it right because up in the top left corner will come a lot of information telling you that you are using ENB. Well, that won't tell you you're doing it right. It will tell you that you have installed at least the .dll file correctly. However, that is what you should expect to see. It then says SSAO enabled fast mode. Now, once in game, you actually have a few new options. The first one is if you press the shift F12 key, it will actually turn off the ENB rendering. So there you go, that's the vanilla game. And if you press shift F12 again, it turns it back on. And this lets you see the difference, so you can do some comparison shots. It also means you can actually turn the ENB off if the performance is a problem and use it only for screenshots and that type of thing. Another nice little feature you get is a frame rate counter. If you're not using anything like Fraps to measure your frame rate and you want to see uh, the difference, if you press the asterisk key, the star, on the number pad, you will see in the top left hand corner it is now reporting my frame rate um, and you press the same key again and it will disappear. This is very useful for trying to get an idea of whether this EMB will work for you um, and to identify you know, tweaks that you make, whether they're having um, a noticeable effect. Um, and uh, it's fairly nicely done. It doesn't seem to get in the way. You forget it's there after a while, although generally speaking, I would recommend playing without it. Some of the later ENB mods, the ones that use more up-to-date uh, versions of the EMB series actually have some other options, but this is not one of them. And to uninstall the mod, it's actually pretty simple. You just reverse the process. Go along to Sharpshooters ENB, deactivate, then go along to the game folder, and what you're going to want to do is delete the d3d9.dll. Believe it or not, if you do that, the mod is essentially inert. It will it will do nothing now. Um, however, I do suggest you remove effect.txt and the files all beginning with ENB. You don't actually need to. You can leave those there. Without the DLL, they will do nothing, but you can delete them for neatness. Um, if you're wondering what this ENB SSAO DOF toggler is, I will explain that in another video. <laughs> don't worry about it for now. And once you've done that, I would recommend once more going along to Skyrim Launcher and double-clicking because once again, it will want to check out hardware and again, change the settings. Change that to whatever you feel like. I did mention in the Sharpshooters video that this ENB mod will disable night vision, whether it's the vanilla night vision or a modded night vision. It also disables lighting mods and so on. And you can change that. You can change it so this ENB mod is compatible with those mods so that you can have night vision. But it does have some unintended effects. It doesn't look quite the way the original mod author intended. And so many scenes might be too bright or maybe they'll be too dark. I'm not totally sure. So use the following tweak at your own risk. And I, I say risk there is no risk of breaking anything, damaging anything, but of course, you, you know, it will change the way the game looks outside of the original author's intent. So, you're looking for ENB effect.fx, right click and edit. Now, you can edit with Notepad or Notepad. If you haven't got Notepad, I do highly recommend it if you're going to do this sort of thing. It's just so much more pleasant. You're looking for apply game color correction, and you will see this line. Remove the two slashes there. Dead simple. Control S or file save and you're done. Now when you boot up the game, it will look a little different. I can tell you it still looks great, but it will look a little different. But your night vision will now work. 
And that is it. That really is all there is to install in this mod. As I said, it's very similar to installing SKSE. A little bit more involved, but not really that complicated. It's not dangerous in the slightest because uninstalling this mod is very easy and is complete. You uninstall this mod and it is as if it was never there. If you uninstall this mod and something is going wrong, then you have done something wrong, I think. It really is. There's no reason not to try these mods out whatsoever. The only, the only thing that uh, you should know or at least take into account is that when you install the mod, it does rerun the Skyrim launcher. And of course, the Skyrim launcher overwrites the INI files. So any tweaks you have made to your INI files to combat shadows and so on are probably going to get reset. That is one thing you should be aware. It will, and it's not the mod that's doing that, it's Skyrim itself. It's detected a new DLL file um, used for graphics and it's reset your INI file. So that is the only thing I could think of that you might want to be aware of. So if you are wary of that, take a backup of your INI files if you've been editing them. If you've not been editing them, don't worry. You don't need to take a backup because there's no problem. Okay, well, I hope this video helped, and I will see you guys next time.